Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of our program, The Platform, our weekend edition. And on this program we look at what's happening uh, with uh, the 50th anniversary of Peter Nygaard as a fashion mogul. Uh, Nygaard International is celebrating its 50th anniversary, its golden jubilee in the fashion business. And over the last uh, several weeks we have been accommodating a number of personalities who know of uh, Peter Nygaard, Nygaard Key, and what he has sought to uh, achieve in the Bahamas in terms of fitness, uh, in terms of getting people to take care of their health. And Bianca Nygaard is here today, and uh, she has brought some wonderful guests, as usual. Uh, Bianca, it's nice to see you again. It's great to be here. Thank you. And uh, today we have uh, Benjamin Alexander. Yes. Yes? This is me. This is you, every <laughs> in, in living colors, eh? Yes. And uh, you've been uh, coming to the Bahamas for many years. Indeed, you worked in the Bahamas for some time, eh? Yeah, I actually did some schooling in the Bahamas, too. Uh, did you really? Yeah, some time way back. Uh, I went to L for some years, L.W. Young. L.W. Young. You yes. call it L. I you see. <laughs> <laughs> L.W. Young, yeah. I left in grade 11. Okay, uh, but you are originally from? St. Lucia. Okay, and uh, you came to the Bahamas as a very young, young boy. Yeah, very young boy, because my mom works here. She'd been there for like 29 years, so as a kid, I would always come for summer. Mm -hmm. And I left, when I left, I left in grade 11. I went back to St. Lucia, and I hadn't been back like 17 years. You hadn't been to St. Lucia for 17 years? The Bahamas. Oh, Bahamas? Yeah. Okay. But you, you are working with Versage, aren't you? Yeah, Versage, OB. I've been with them for the past three years. What do you do with Versage? Um, I'm a sampler. Um, I do additional music, additional percussions. I program music. I'm a little bit of band directing here and there. I produce music for the band also, for Wendy Dyson. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wendy. I'm a vocalist in the band too. You're a vocalist? Yeah, so yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm a vocalist. And I'm told that you created uh, some music of your own? Yes, definitely. What is it called? Um, I got Lay Bam Bam, which went big in the Bahamas all over the world. I got tracks um, with Wendy, one song. I got Can't Get Enough, a remix I just did for Versage. I got two tracks for Masqueraders last year, Carnival, this year, um, year before and working on something for them as we speak. Lay Bam Bam. <laughs> yes. what, what is Lay Bam Bam? Lay Bam Bam. Lay Bam Bam in, this, in, in St. Lucia, we, you know, Bam Bam is like your butt, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. You know, but Bam Bam is like when you bam on something and then Bam Bam is like, when I say Lay Bam Bam, it was like a melody. It's like I was trying to, I was dreaming and I was hearing something. I couldn't make it out. So what I was saying was lay bam bam, lay bam bam. And that is like, it's the rhythm I couldn't refuse. That lay bam bam I keep hearing, that's the rhythm that's been in my head. So every time I go to a particular party and I would hear something like that, like lay bam bam, that would be the music I can't refuse. Mm. That's how the lyrics are in the song. That's the, Sing it a little bit, Benji, because <laughs> Mr. Jones isn't getting familiar and it's always so on it's, the radio and it's huge in like soca. It's, always, it's a huge hit, Mr. Jones. Um, okay. It's awesome. It's lay bam bam, lay bam badam, lay bam bam, lay bam badam yes. day. It's the rhythm I can't refuse it. Yeah. Lay bam bam, lay bam badam, lay bam bam. Give me the soca music. It's a rhythm in my head. Every time me touch the bed, lay bam bam, lay bam badam, lay bam bam. So this is really It's a rhythm way. in my soul, so I had to play the role. Lay bam bam. And then it's a rhythm inside that makes me want to fly. Every time I hear that soca beat, my heart start pumping, pumping. <laughs> JNC pull up the track there one more time. I can't stop, I can't stop, because I hearing it again. Lay bam bam, you know. Okay, well, yeah. you, 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 you are obviously a great vocalist because you did that without um, musical accompaniment, eh? No, I can do that. You can do that. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, and this is what you, you have arranged this for? for yeah, I produced this song myself. No, okay. This, I produced this song. It was my first track releasing in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've worked through Carnival and all of that? Yes, I did Bahamas Carnival two years. And Carnival's all over, Miami, New York. 
Okay. Oh, yes, all over the place. See, th wow. this is the thing. Um, we were, we've been speaking about my dad and how he um, ha isn't from here, right? And he's a rags to riches story and, and stuff, and he really did whatever it takes to make things happen mm -hmm, for himself. Mm -hmm and um, how he fell in love with the Bahamas and he travels all around the world holding the Bahamian flag even though he's not Bahamian by birth but he's Bahamian at heart. And Definitely. here Benji is doing the same thing and has done the same thing. So he, um, he produced this video, he made the video but it was uh, a challenge to make it and he went through every length to get it definitely, done. Definitely, definitely. Um, it was, I was in the Bahamas 2015 and I went back to St. Lucia for 2016 Carnival, and I was like, I need to do this video so St. Lucia can know of the Bahamian flag, and the Bahamas can see how close our flag really is to theirs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, being a masquerader, it wasn't nothing difficult for me to bring a Bahamian flag and show and represent for the people that give me love. It wasn't nothing difficult, you know, the masqueraders, you know, they support me a lot. It wasn't nothing for me to bring and let St. Lucia know that's the people I work with, mm -hmm. you know, so it was, good that I could have done that and I'll do it every time. Yes, it's so nice. How is um, the Seleucia uh, Carnival um, in contrast to the, what we uh, have as Bahamian Carnival now? Well, then again, St. Lucia Carnival has been a couple years old. You know, Bahamian is three years, just starting off. You know, and it's good for what it is, but St. Lucia is, you know, a long route. The route is long. It's two days, Monday and Tuesday. The Monday is a holiday, always a holiday. The mm -hmm. Tuesday is half day, mm -hmm. you know, and it's uh, like two weeks of partying. Two three, weeks of partying? I mean, like, I mean, it's months, right? But like the real two weeks, was like two weeks of partying every day, Monday, Tuesday, three, four shows in the morning, in the night, bringing in the morning goes on for that, especially that week of carnival, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's like four shows a day different times 9 to 12 12 to 7 and then it would go on like this until monday tuesday and you've competed in in not competed but you've participated in both <laughs> yeah de yeah definitely um san lucia carnival bahamas it's, it's, it's a must you know wherever it's carnival and i'm around i can't miss it but you you like the soca beat um and how is uh that received as far as you know, as a musician, as opposed to, because there is a Bahamian beat. Yes, there is a Bahamian beat. Um, then again, I went to school here. I grew up in the Bahamian culture. Junkanoo is something I really love. You know, back in that time, I didn't really know about the rake and scrape. Yes, I heard it, but I wouldn't, you know, I just knew Junkanoo. I rushed with fancy dancers for a couple of years from Camp Road. Um, so it, it grew on me. So in St. Lucia producing music, when I produced something, it would, they would always say, like, it's not soca. So it was, that was the hardest part for me because whenever I try to do a beat, they would say it's not soca, and I'm saying, like, it's soca music. So now, since I'm in the Bahamas and I see, like, how close the Bahamians are to my music, I realize that I use the Bahamian elements, but I don't use the instruments. So I would program the African drums like a goat skin drum, but not a goat skin drum. You know, it was just automatic. It's now I can explain it. Because whenever I go to the radio stations, they was like, what's this? I was, That's a soca song. They was like, no, this is not soca. I was like, what it is then? They said, they don't know, but it's not soca. So I would always try to do a soca song. And in St. Lucia, they would be like, it's not soca. So you've been marrying soca with the John Cano beat. That's what's been happening. So you need to come up with a new name for that. <laughs> <laughs> and you just have a song now that you just did where you really infused the John Cano beat. Yes, well, Obi, Obi Pinlin. This, my, this one is my boss. He brought me up here first. He loves his junk canoe. He loves soca too. Because he brought me to Trinidad for the past three years um, with, with him. Any soca song, he would want a junk canoe in it. So that's what I would do too. So in the band, when we play something, I would add junk canoe. Any element that is not live, I would be responsible for. Mm. You understand? If a background singer, a percussionist, a drummer, something is missing in the music. I would have it in. So when I did this song, Can I Get Enough with some Trinidadians, he was like, yo, you really need to put some Junkano in this. Like everything needs, have, needs to have Junkano for Obi. So I was like, no problem. And then I'd been working on the Junkano and it was like crazy. Like whenever I played it for someone, they'd be like, oh my God, what's this? 
And I was like, Obi, you're always right when it comes to Giancana, you know? <laughs> uh, so so the, as to use Bianca's word, the infusion of, of the Giancana music and the soca music has been well received um, in, in the Bahamas. But what about outside the Bahamas? Well, definitely, that's, that's what I'm working on there right now, getting the Bahamas, the Bahamian music out there in terms of adding some of the Bahamian elements in my songs, collaborations with other artists, so it can get out there more. The actual, I did two collaborations with John Cano. One was, was with Le Bam Bam and MDs. That's another one of my friends. He's a Bahamian artist, Dan Sol Reggae. He did a, a collaboration. He did a remix for Le Bam Bam. I added John Cano to that. I did the remix with um, Dylan McKenzie's son, um, D-Mac's son. And then I did this John Cano, this remix on my own. I did this remix for Can't Get Enough. I added the John Cano. I added some cowbells. I added some vocals in the front. I mentioned the Bahamas, Obi, the band name Versage, as always, just to get that out there. And that's the one that's been playing the most. Mm. You know, this one. And it's, it's very good, you know. And I, I'm real happy about the junk and the sound and trying to get it out there because a lot of people use the, 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 the rhythm, but they don't really know what it is. You know, because I listen to a couple of songs and I can hear the junk and the rhythm in the song, but not the actual tam tams and. The cowbells, they use shakers, they use tambourines, but it would have the same Bahamian swing. It could automatically say it's a, a rake and scrape song. If you just add a saw, or add a, a shaker, or a hi hat to it, it would be a Bahamian song just like that. You know, so I try to work on that and try to get it out there. It's been received well. I went to New York for Labor Day, and the Bahamian, the, the, the Bahamian people out in New York, St. Lucians, I did some radio interviews. They love it, you know. I did this remix now. Some people from Atlanta just reached out to me to send it to them so I could do some interviews online, and, you know. So that's the, that's, the, that's the great thing. It's really African music, isn't it? It's African music, you know. It's African drums. It's, mm. African, it's African drums. We from different parts of the world just draw to a particular type of sound from the drums. You know what I mean? Mm. I sent Lucia in the Calypso, you use a lot of Congo drums and bongo drums. Like, tutum, tum, kutum, tutum, tum, kutum. like the congas and the bongo drums. In the Bahamas, there's different types of drums. Mm. Like, I mean, and thank God that I had the opportunity to see that and know that a lot of people don't know what produces that type of sound. They don't know the difference between the goat skin drum, they don't know Bahamian sticking drum heads to make the instrument. A lot of people in my country don't know that, period. They, you understand, they don't know what cowbells is. They don't use goatskin yeah. drums in St. Lucia? No. I mean, we use goatskin drums, which is different African drums you put in your foot, like different Rastafarians. Like the Congo drum. drum yeah. Congo drum, bongo drum, all type of drums. Mm. But no no Bahamian goatskin drums, no tam drums. They never heard about that. Yes. Now, the brass music has been featured quite uh, prominently uh, um, in, in some of these uh, sounds um, that you've done and I believe that Versage has a, a, a brass section as well. Right? Yeah, Versage had a brass section, it's no longer with them. Obi normally plays the brass on his keyboard. On the keyboard? Yeah, Obi, mm. Obi normally plays the brass. But I, I work with brass people because I do a lot of work with Saxons too. Because Saxons adopted my song last year and they played it a couple times. So I had a, a session with the brass section, just me singing with the brass. And that went viral. That's what, that's how my song, that's how they found out about my song in St. Lucia. When the brass went viral, they didn't know about the song. They was like, what's this? What's all the brass? I was like, that's a junk in a group. That's how they do like a carnival. The Bahamas Festival, all these people, no electronical stuff, is they blow for hours. Do you understand? Mm. So a lot of people was like, whoa, you have a whole orchestra behind you there like that. Because you know, the brass is not, you don't have all the brass in St. Lucia apart from the police band or the defense force and a few, a few school, school kids, mm. that's it. Not like L.W. Young or C.I. Gibson with a whole brass section, kids growing up playing that. That was always amazing to me. I would always talk about that in St. Lucia. I would be like, we don't blow recorders in the Bahamas. We blow brass, trombones, trumpets, <laughs> flutes, saxophones, <laughs> and, and, and tubas from grade seven to grade 11, 12, until they go to the Defense Force, until they, they just, they just become an instrument. And know? then you have the, the, the goatskin drums, the whistles, and the cow, cowbells with that. With so that. that is a real orchestra. Yeah, real orchestra, real music, you know? Yes. It's a real orchestra. 
Definitely. Interesting. Yes. And Benji goes to schools and, um, well, he went to Xavier's. Yes. And um, the kids went wild when he was performing for them. We have a little video clip yes, of that, too. Yes. yes. Um, that, was, that was great. They reached out to me and they was like, Benji, how much are you going to charge to do some stuff for the kids for fun day? I was like, no, we don't charge the kids. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm coming. I just have, just have some water. I don't eat <laughs> flesh and stuff. Just have maybe some tuna fish or grace or any sandwich or cheese or anything. <laughs> and I'll be fine. They're like, you sure? I said, yeah, cool. Yes. And when I came there, I was surprised to see all the kids knew the song. It was, was, was shot. Uh, Xavier? Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. it's Xavier. Xavier. Yeah, Xavier. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, I was surprised. And that went big too because people from St. Lucia and New York would reach out to me. I was like, yo, we love to see the kids have fun as kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they dance as kids and they have. And I was like, yo, that's amazing. I didn't even know. <laughs> so um, it, it is quite easy to uh, internationalize um, your sound. Yeah, definitely. Your sound, yeah. um, this Hey Bam Bam, that should be um, a, a, a hot seller um, in, in African countries. Well, definitely. Um, I haven't reached out to the African countries for me personally knowing, mm -hmm. but I know I represented the Bahamas in Beijing with Le Bam Bam. In Beijing? <laughs> yeah, China. That's my first time to China. Okay. You know, that was my second year. I went with Versace. So how was, how was that received in Beijing? That was awesome. The Bahamian ambassador came to me. He was like, you're not a Bahamian, right? I said, no, I'm a St. Lucian. He was like, yeah, but you're Bahamian now. <laughs> in China, <laughs> because, you know, I represented, I did my piece of Le Bam Bam with Versace. And it was junk, it was the junk on version. But I did the whole song. And that was awesome. You know, that was the most picks I ever took in my life. So where, 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 was the, that, where was this done? That was Beijing. This, this yeah, was the, where? It was, um, it was an open concert? It, open was, concert, it was Latin American music festival. I see. Mm -hmm. You know, so we had Trinidad, countries from all over Barbados, had a contingent representing them. We went to represent Bahamas. I think Tingham Band was also there. Um, Fred Mannings. Okay, you know, I, I know a few, Fred Yeah. Yes. So we did our set. We did like three shows for the Chinese people. My God Key has been um, promoting Bahamian music as well. And um, I'm sure you've been there, right? Oh, definitely. I've been to the Paradise in the Paradise. The Paradise <laughs> in the Paradise. Yeah, Paradise in Paradise, you know, because Night God is something like Night God Key. I've been hearing about this key. I've been researching and checking out the videos until Julian, believe, had a video. And he was like, Benji, I need you to, to come. When I went there, I was like, whoa, that's my first time I went. I saw the boats, and you know, I was happy to know that he still supports a Bahamian artist. You know, it, it gave me a lot of joy to know that, you know, all this was afforded to Julian to just be better at his skill. You know, um, we went on the boats, you know, I saw, the, the key, I saw it from the water. It was beautiful. You know, the people who work there are very beautiful, you know. His daughter showed me a very good time. So to, to tell me something, uh, Benjamin Alexander, in, uh, what, is, what do you have in your plans, say, for an, another decade or so? Another decade or so, definitely working on getting the St. Lucian, Bahamian people together, you know, to represent as a bigger blue, black, yellow family. You understand? Um, Definitely see myself working with a lot of Bahamian artists on a bigger, a bigger level. You know, getting that Bahamian sound as far as I can. You know, establishing, establishing a lot of um, new artists. You know, bring them Saint Lucia. You know, just merge, mm -hmm. bridge, bridge, bridge. Just bridge us together to just be stronger. Yeah. Because when I went to the Bahamas. When I, in New York, you don't really hear the Bahamians doing shows like that. They would be in everything. But to see a Bahamian doing a, a party like how St. Lucians would bring me up or Trinidadians would bring. So I'm trying to do something like that so Bahamian artists can have their own stuff everywhere in the Caribbean or anywhere in the world they go. Mm -hmm. We have a show in St. Lucia, Bahamian artists are going to be on board. You could have a Wendy and a Dyson being, having something that they want to hear and they're going to pay for. Um, definitely establishing a big studio here. Working with a lot of kids, you know, establishing a studio here. I have a studio in St. Lucia, get it bigger, you know, help a lot of people. I love helping and getting the art form better. Yeah. You know, the more I teach, the more I learn. So, 
Very good. You know, we, we've been uh, losing um, musicians uh, in, in our country, you know, um, Ronnie yeah. Butler has passed, yes. uh, King Harry Gibson has the passed. Um, just this past week, um, the great pianist uh, Henry Moss uh, has passed. He played with the uh, Mighty Makers a long time ago and had his own group and um, went to Berkeley and uh, oh. taught a whole lot of people piano uh, in the Bahamas, including myself. Whoa. Uh, and so uh, we. Uh, send our sympathy to uh, his, uh, his uh, wife and family uh, because we, we, as I said, we are losing uh, a number of, of great musicians and uh, so young people must fill, fill the void. Yeah, eh? definitely, definitely. Um, uh, and you, whenever you do your work properly, the young people are definitely going to be attracted to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to do music and try to get it better every day so the young people can see and want to be in something like that, as opposed to just doing music and trying to get away and from, from work. It's a lot of hard work, you know? It's, 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 it's like any other thing. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna come in one day. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice yes. to get this better. So I'm out there to show them, and I'm a living testimony of that, you know? It's very, it was very hard for me. And then being a St. Lucian coming and having some of the biggest songs in the Bahamas, working for Bahamas Masquerade as being one of the biggest bands in the Bahamas. It's a privilege, you know, from coming from where I come from. Yes. You know? So wh wh what do you call a man who is Bahamian and, and St. Lucian? Uh, what is, well, how do you put those two together? Eh? He just, he just, he just <laughs> walks around with both flags all the time. Walk around with both yeah, flags. Yeah, that's what he does. No, well, well, no I'm trying to find a name for it. Yes. But <laughs> I definitely walk around with both. I have my Bahamian flag in my pocket right now. It's not for fun. It's just, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Um, are we call it St. Lucian behavior? Yes, uh, uh, you, you, uh, well, you, 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 you are, uh, quite frankly, um, uh, a good ambassador for the Bahamas. Definitely. Uh, because you are infusing uh, the Junkanoo beat in everything that you do, eh? Definitely. I'm, I got to work and represent the people that support me. If I have a group of people support me and they say, this is good, I mean, that, I can't stop there. I got to keep pushing and show them well. Whilst you out saying this is good, it's really good for you, and I trying to get it better. So that's why I represent the Bahamas, because I got a lot of love from the Bahamian people. Yes. You know, so I gotta show them. Okay, every time I go out, I'm gonna represent the Bahamas. I'm gonna mention the Bahamas. The world has to know about the Bahamas where I am staying right now. You know. Well, we we're going to have a piece of music uh, coming in from a little young uh, young man, uh, uh, Samanet. <laughs> Oh, yes, and he is um, also a basketball star, okay. not Bahamian, but also contributing to the Bahamas and, um, and, sh and almost like a Bahamian now. Very so good. So Simonette, but not, we're trying to figure out how he's from here. It's spelled a different way. I see. <laughs> that is S-I-M-O-N-E-T. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a break here. And um, Alexander, it's good to see you. Thank uh, you. Thank you so very much for uh, coming here today and uh, sharing with us. I like that song, Hey Bamba. Yeah. Hey Bamba. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's take this uh, break on the program and we'll. <laughs> 